is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Have you ever heard about the dream Abraham Lincoln had? Before, just a few days before he died, he had a dream in which he was shown he was going to be murdered. Guess what he did? Nothing. And he was murdered. Well, my guest had a dream about a close family member and did something and he did not die. And she got the revelation from a dream. And she has a passion for you not to dismiss your dreams as pizza dreams, but start understanding that they're messages from God. And she has a supernatural gift to equip you to understand the language of dreams. Anyone interested? Yeah. You know, the problem I have with all of my guests, they have so many amazing things that are happening. For instance, you told me, I believe it was just yesterday, you prayed for a cheerleader. What happened? As I was prophesying to her, um, the Lord showed me that she had a debilitating injury in, in her body. I sense that the Lord wants to heal you of a debilitating injury that you once had. And I didn't even know that she was a cheerleader. And as I prophesied to her, the Lord began to heal her heart. And as he healed her heart, he began to heal her body and found out that she was a, a cheerleader that had over rotated on a flip, broke her back oh. and had been in extreme pain for about two years. The Lord is healing your body right now. He is restoring your back. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Wow. And right before our eyes, God completely healed her back. She had no mobility before. She could put her hands all the way to the floor, move side to side. How do you feel? I've got to go try this. And then to my horror, she ran out and started throwing back handsprings in the backyard. <laughs> so. <laughs> no. That is normal. <laughs> According to the Bible. That's right. <laughs> I pray the whole world become normal. But now, you, you were not so normal. Uh, you, <laughs> you had an uh, evangelical type of background. Uh, I, and uh, God doesn't speak to you today. Miracles don't happen today. Uh, but at what age did you first hear God's audible voice? Well, I was 16 years old. The Lord spoke to me and in an audible voice and began to reorder my entire life. What, what, where were you headed with your life at that time? I had college plans, career plans. I had a scholarship in place, roommate in place, everything planned out. And the Lord came to me and spoke to me audibly, which surprised me because nobody told me that God was still speaking. But he said to me, the plans that you've made for your life are not the plans I've made for your life. You know what? Look in the camera and say that out loud and prophesy to someone. Somebody else needs to hear this. The plans that you've made for your life are not the plans that God has made for your life. Some of you feel like everything is falling apart all around about you, and it's because God is redirecting you, God is restructuring you. Somebody out there just lost your job, and you feel like it was unjust, but I really feel like the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I'm reordering your steps. Watch and see as I open a new door for you. 
What, what did God tell you? That he's reordering your life. Did he tell you what, what, it, what you're supposed to do now with your life? He did. He said, instead of going to that college, instead you're going to go to Bible college. When you get there, you're going to meet a man. You're going to get married young. He said, you're going to go into ministry immediately, and I'm going to make the two of you a team, and I'm going to send you to the nations of the world, and as a team, sometimes he'll preach and sometimes you'll preach, but you'll, you'll be doing something new in the earth. And I said, Lord, can you show me somebody that's doing what I'll be doing then? And the Lord said, there's nobody doing now what you'll be doing then because I'll be doing a new thing. Mm, that's another word for you too. Uh, okay, I know that you have such a passion to equip people to understand their dreams and their visions. Uh, I, I don't understand. Well, I'm the type of person, just tell me, God, what to do, and I'm going to do it. I don't need code. I don't need, uh, well, God, what are you saying? Now, I've had a few dreams in my life that were literal. Can I have a little dream every night? What is this business with codes? I sure wish that they would be literal every single night. Uh, but you know, when Jesus came, he actually talked to the disciples in parables, which many of the people that heard him actually didn't even understand him. And they had to actually come aside and say, would you mind explaining to us what this parable meant or what that parable meant? And you know, one day um, I, I had some dreams that really startled me and that really kind of changed the whole way that I looked at dreams because I didn't come from a church background. I didn't know that God was speaking until he spoke to me. And then I didn't know that dreams were for today until I actually had some dreams that were quite obviously from, to, from the Lord for my life right then. And you know what? I, I understand you were having dreams and they were coming to pass quickly. That's so right. you kind of put the two together. That's uh, right. So you're, you're especially gifted. What about me? What about you? Uh, is it for everyone? It is. You know, Acts chapter 2, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, um, the, the quote from the book of Joel was, was brought forth by Peter. And, and he said this. He said, in the last days, which I think you'll agree, we're in the last days. We're, we're in the last of the last That's days. That's right. The last of the last days. God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And the result is going to be your sons and your daughters are going to start prophesying. But beyond that, it says young men are going to see visions old men are going to dream dreams. Okay. So prophecy, dreams, and visions are ways that God speaks. And then God says, I'm going to pour, pour it out on all flesh. Many, many years I read, and I thought that said Christian flesh, but it doesn't even say Christian flesh. It says all flesh. Okay. So, so if it says all flesh, that is, does that explain why I'm hearing so many reports of Muslims in the yes. Middle East? They're having dreams. Uh, uh, tell me what you're hearing. The phenomenon is happening throughout the Muslim world, throughout the Buddhist world, even here in the secular world, that God is visiting people in dreams. I just heard a story a couple weeks ago about a Muslim man that actually was in uh, the UK that had a dream, and the Lord said, You must go to the street corner where you will find a man carrying two sticks in the shape of a cross. He went and talked to the man and the two sticks in the shape of the cross was the cross. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I confess all of my sins today and I change my ways from here on in Jesus' name. And the man led him to Christ. You know, um, you, have a, you have an understanding of Proverbs 29 to 18 that will really show you why dreams are so important. Proverbs 29 says that, that where there is no vision, people perish, where there is no vision. When you look that word vision up, it literally has other translations, where there is no prophecy, where there is no revelation, people dwell carelessly, people wander aimlessly, people cast off restraint. And I think if ever we were living in a day that looks like that, that's today. And I believe that God wants to, to not just raise up the Christian community to begin to hear the voice of God for ourselves so that we know what God is saying to us, but I believe that God wants to raise up Daniels and Josephs so that when when God begins to pour his spirit out and begin to give vision to an unbeliever or someone that doesn't know Christ in another religion, <laughs> that then that person that's a Daniel or Joseph can say, you know what? I believe God's talking to you. Let me tell you what I believe he's saying. It's happened to me. I've led people to the Lord by interpreting their dreams. Tell, in, that, in that verse, the word vision yes. means again, the word vision means in the Hebrew. It means prophecy or prophetic revelation. 
And without a prophecy, a dream, a prophetic revelation, that's right. my people perish. That's right. That, that's, that's pretty heavy. That's right. Okay, when we come back, there's a dimension you don't even, you, you don't even know. In your dreams, all the gifts of the Spirit operate. You can literally even get physically healed in your dreams. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! Did you know that God created sleep? We spend one third of our lives sleeping so that God has a captive audience that He can speak to us. What if there's a way for you to get direction for your life and every problem that you're facing? Jane Hammond has received a download from heaven to demystify God's dreams and visions. She has helped thousands understand the keys to interpret and act upon this supernatural communication from God. Now Jane Hammond wants to impart to you how to unlock the answers so you can solve life's most pressing issues. Receive healing and prophetic words while you're sleeping or when you're awake through dreams and visions. Call now and get Jane Hammond's powerful book and four-part audio CD teaching set, Dreams and Visions, Understanding and Interpreting God's Messages to You. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9407. Jane Hammond's book is considered one of the best written resources, which includes great depth, yet is still easy to understand and apply concerning dreams and visions. Through it, you will learn that any believer can participate in dream and vision interpretation. Understand how to remember your dreams and keep a record of them. Learn how to hear God through your visions by day and in your dreams at night. Understand how to easily determine if the dream or vision is from God or if it is a counterfeit. Have access to the biblical language and symbolism in your dreams and visions so you fully understand the meaning. Learn what to do if a dream or vision contains warnings. Begin to discern when a dream or vision is prophetic direction for your life and what to do about it. Through her four-part audio CD teaching set, Jane Hammond provides answers to frequently asked questions on the topic of dreams and visions. How do you know if a dream or vision is from God? How can you be assured your interpretation is right? How can you increase having dreams or visions? How do you get rid of nightmares? And so much more. The book and audio CD teaching set is a great tool for encouraging, equipping, and releasing an army of Daniels and Josephs who can encourage leaders and change nations. Don't miss out on getting Jane Hammond's powerful book and four-part audio CD teaching set, Dreams and Visions, Understanding and Interpreting God's Messages to You, yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9407. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9407 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. I, I kind of like this idea. When you sleep, the gifts <laughs> of the Spirit operate. Uh, tell me about someone that was healed while they were sleeping. Well, I have a friend that actually had a dream. He ha uh, when he went to bed, he had actually had a torn Achilles. And when that night he dreamed that he was in a healing meeting, that somebody called out a word of knowledge and prayed for him. And in the dream, he was healed. And when he woke up the next day, he was 100% whole. Yeah, and you know what? <laughs> You don't even have to have any faith. It's all done for you the dream. I like that deal. All right, what if I've had this, you've had this, you've had this, you have a, uh, of something bad happening to yourself or a family member. Does it have to happen if you've had this dream? Absolutely not. I believe that God gives warning dreams. That's where my whole journey with dreams started because I had a dream about my brother that he got very sick and died. And in my dream it seemed so real that, um, that I thought that it had actually happened. And when I woke up, I laid there thinking, was that real or was that a dream? And I realized it had been a dream and I began to comfort myself saying, oh, it was only a dream, it was only a dream. And I heard the voice of God say to me loudly, it's not just a dream, get up and pray. And so as I got up and I prayed for my brother, eventually I felt a peace and went back to bed. The next morning my mother called me to say that my brother, the night before, was on a deep woods camping trip when his appendix ruptured. And by the time they got him in from the woods, he actually almost died, but he was going to live. And I believe it's because God woke me up to intercede for him. Hmm. Well, you know, one of many stories. 
there are different sources of dreams, types of dreams. Do you ever deal with children that have nightmares? Yes, I was, I was a child that had nightmares, and my children had nightmares. And they, were, they can either be, a nightmare can either be God trying to get your attention, because not every dream is from God, but neither is every nightmare from the devil. Because God gave Abimelech a dream in Genesis chapter 20, when he had taken Abraham's wife, Sarah, he mm -hmm. said, she's my sister, okay? And it says in that verse, it says, God came to him at night in a dream and said, Abimelech, you're a dead man. Okay, this is not a happy dream, okay? This is probably a nightmare, okay? I would call it a nightmare. <laughs> so sometimes God will give us a nightmare to get our attention. I believe like he did with my brother, okay? He, he gave me a nightmare to get my attention so that I would pray. But when it's a demonic dream, I believe that we can stand against the demonic force. We can believe that the blood of Jesus breaks the power of every demonic thing. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna pray right now that if you're being tormented by demonic dreams, I just declare to you, right now that the Lord himself is rising up and it declares in scripture that he gives his beloved sweet sleep and I break the power of every demonic assignment to torment you to harass you and to afflict you at night in your dreams in Jesus name I break the power of it and I decree sweet sleep in Jesus name do you know what I want I want Jane to pray to activate you into dreams from God where he's going to show you the things you're questioning. He's going to, he has such marvelous good plans for you. I don't want you to miss one. I'll have her pray when we come back. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural. Jane, you, you teach something that I wish more people understood. If you have an unsaved friend, an unsaved uh, family member, you have a new way to pray for them. Explain that. Well, if God's going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh, then I think that we can start praying and asking God to give that individual a dream. Because a dream bypasses all the walls of defense that people would put up even to just coming in event trying to evangelize them but when God himself starts to speak to them in dreams it's amazing Job chapter 33 actually says God may speak one way or in another but many times man doesn't perceive it then at night in a vision while a man sleeps upon his bed then he begins to remove pride from man so that he can begin to speak into his heart. I've actually been able to sit next to somebody and interpret their dream. See, sometimes I can tell people that I'm a pastor or that I'm a prophet, but if I just tell people, you know, I interpret dreams, then that atheist will say, oh, well, really, well, I had this dream, and they'll tell me a dream, and God will open up their heart and use the prophetic word as a key through that dream. Speaking of dreams, what, what do you tell someone that says, I don't dream, or I don't understand my dreams, or I don't remember my dreams, any of the above. I, I have an idea that the devil really tries to sabotage this wonderful vehicle God has given us. He does, you know, because I think if you really even look at scripture, you know that people even receive impartation at night when they sleep in dreams. So it's such an important thing. And so scientists actually say that everybody dreams. It's just a matter of do we remember our dreams? And so I like to train people to hear to how to capture their dreams if they're not remembering them, how to take the dream and, inter and interpret it if it's actually something that's symbolic, and how to take the message that God is bringing to us through the dream and actually apply it to our lives or to our circumstance or how to pray even for our nation um, and, and to how to bring that forth so that we're not just being hearers but actually doers of what God is speaking to us. 
Now, you've put together such a simplistic plan for understanding the symbols. Uh, give us a little bit of this understanding of symbols, because a dream, uh, might, you might think it's a literal thing, but it really is a symbolic thing of something else. That's right. You know, I, and I think that what we have to understand, first of all, is that there's no just book of symbols that we can go run mm -hmm. and look it up and say, well, if you dream this, it means this, because God will speak to individuals through their own personal language right. of symbolism. It's because different if, for each person. Exactly. If I love dogs and you don't like dogs, that symbol is going to mean something different to different right. people. And so there's a personal language that the Holy Spirit will teach us. But I believe that there's very basic, simple, step-by-step -step, uh, uh, ways of understanding what the symbols mean. And we've got to remember, we have the mind of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, and God's not giving us something that's too hard to do. It's actually quite easy when we open ourselves up and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us in that process. Give me one, one symbol to get an idea. Okay, how about the symbol of a house? Yeah. Jesus, you know, if you, you see something happening inside your house. Jesus said that a, a house actually is not really about the house, it's about the man's life. Hmm. Okay, a man that built his house on the sand versus a man that built his house on a rock. So when I have a dream, I look at where it's taking place. If it's mm -hmm. taking place in a house, I know it's, what's happening in the house is something that's happening inside my life. If I can give you a, a quick example, sure. I, uh, we were remodeling our kitchen a few years ago and I wanted to take the wallpaper out of my, of my kitchen and just paint it yellow. But the problem was somebody that had put the wallpaper up originally put it there to last until Jesus returned because I could not get it off the wall. And so I went back and forth and the paint store finally said, well, prime over the wallpaper and just paint. So I did exactly that. And at night I had a beautiful yellow kitchen. Well, that night I had a dream because my previous wallpaper had fruit along the border and vines coming down the walls and I was so done with the vines, okay? <laughs> okay. I just wanted yellow, a yellow kitchen. And so that night when I dreamed though, I was sitting in my beautiful new yellow kitchen when all of a sudden the vines started growing out from under the paint. And I said, oh my God, what's happening? Oh and the voice of the Lord said to me in the dream, he said, this is what happens when you just cover up the things that are too difficult for you to deal with, they grow back. Can you see how God used the, the symbol of the vine to represent, the scripture talks about the root of bitterness or the things that spring up and trouble you and defile many and things perhaps in my life that maybe I just kind of pushed to the side, covered it up, pushed to the side when God said, listen, I need to go back and deal with those issues in your heart. Otherwise they're gonna spring up and they're gonna trouble you and probably defile many. So God, looked, God had me look at what was happening there and knew that it was something that God needed to deal with my heart about. Okay. The presence of God yes. is so strong. Will it you is. pray to stir up these gifts that we start dreaming? Yes. And, and just as a special favor, would you also pray that we have a lot of literal dreams? <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do about that one, okay? Well, oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, that your people are so hungry and so desirous to hear your voice, Lord, whether it's in prophecy, in dreams, or in visions where you speak to us in pictures. And Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would begin to bring us to an awareness of what we're dreaming. Help us remember our dreams. Help us record our dreams. Help us to receive the impartation and the revelation that comes to us in dreams. Activate our spirit man so that we can hear hear you clearly, Lord, and so that we can understand that when you speak literally how we're supposed to apply those messages and how we are to be doers of what you're speaking. Lord, if it's something symbolic, then I pray, Lord, that through the mind of Christ, through the Holy Spirit inside of us, Lord, that you will bring clarity to each and every symbol and that, Lord, that you will blend the symbols together into a very clear message that will touch our hearts, but more than that, Lord, that will change the world. I thank you, Father, that you're raising up world changers. And if you said to the early church, we needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the mantle of revelation with dreams, visions, and prophecy, then, Lord, how much more do we need it today? And so, Lord, we cry out for that. Lord, we cry out for the revival that comes when we hear your voice. We cry out for the harvest of souls, Lord, as you pour out your spirit on all flesh. And I thank you, Lord, for raising up those, Lord, that don't just hear you for themselves, but also hear hear you so that many, many can be led to Christ in Jesus' name. And, and I had a vision as Jane was praying. 
they're someone that has joint problems anywhere in your body. I mean, it started at the head, anything you need. There's even someone that every joint is hurting them. If you'll just kind of shake and say, Jesus, thank you, all the joint problems, fingers, elbow, every, every joint that you need, you're free in Yeshua's name. Did you know that God created sleep? We spend one third of our lives sleeping so that God has a captive audience that He can speak to us. What if there's a way for you to get direction for your life and every problem that you're facing? Jane Hammond has received a download from heaven to demystify God's dreams and visions. She has helped thousands understand the keys to interpret and act upon this supernatural communication from God. Now Jane Hammond wants to impart to you how to unlock the answers so you can solve life's most pressing issues receiving healing and prophetic words while you're sleeping or when you're awake through dreams and visions. Call now and get Jane Hammond's powerful book and four-part audio CD teaching set, Dreams and Visions, Understanding and Interpreting God's Messages to You. Yours for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9407. Jane Hammond's book is considered one of the best written resources, which includes great depth, yet is still easy to understand and apply concerning dreams and visions. Through it, you will learn that any believer can participate in dream and vision interpretation. Understand how to remember your dreams and keep a record of them. Learn how to hear God through your visions by day and in your dreams at night. Understand how to easily determine if the dream or vision is from God or if it is a counterfeit. Have access to the biblical language and symbolism in your dreams and visions so you fully understand the meaning. Learn what to do if a dream or vision contains warnings. Begin to discern when a dream or vision is prophetic direction for your life and what to do about it. I began to write this book on dreams and visions because I have a passion to see the body of Christ begin to open up their eyes and open up their ears to all the different ways that God wants to speak to them. I've actually seen families healed. I've seen bodies healed. I've seen ministries launched. I've seen lives saved uh, as a result of people learning to hear the voice of God in dreams and in visions. Through her four-part audio CD teaching set, Jane Hammond provides answers to frequently asked questions on the topic of dreams and visions. How do you know if a dream or vision is from God? How can you be assured your interpretation is right? How can you increase having dreams or visions? How do you get rid of nightmares? And so much more. I have just tried to make it very, very simple. Learning to hear the voice of the Lord, learning to hear these messages, writing things out as God speaks to them, and then a very simple step-by-step -step process about how to take the mystery language of symbolism and how to bring it right down into the reality of where we live today. The book and audio CD teaching set is a great tool for encouraging, equipping, and releasing an army of Daniels and Josephs who can encourage leaders and change nations. God wants you to hear His voice more than you even want to hear His voice. This material is a catalyst for you to be a hearer and a doer of God's Word. Don't miss out on getting Jane Hammond's powerful book and four-part audio CD teaching set, Dreams and Visions, Understanding and Interpreting God's Messages to You, Yours, for a donation of $40. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9407. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9407 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. The igniter of faith. Because if you've got oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit, He's got fire. Are you ready for the fire? Yeah.